Hello, this is Dan, the Furniture Repairman. Today we're going to show you how to use rattle can toners to color a piece of furniture to a certain color that you're trying to shoot for. On the bottom left, you can see that's what we end up with, even though it looks very different than what we start with. And we're going to show you how we do it. Now, on the right hand side, you can see a natural pine. That's what's in my hand that I'm spraying. It's a rattle can. So it's coming in. The toner is a clear coat with a color in it. So there's a couple different things. We've already sealed the wood, so we're not soaking into the grain, and we're spraying our color on top. Now, sometimes you can wipe on a, a color. You would call that glazing. That works very well. In this case, we have all these colors uh, from Mohawk. They come in cans. There's probably 50, 60 different colors, and we could use them to color this piece. Now, the reason we decide to go this route is that it'll let us creep up on the color until we get to where we want to be. Now, I'm laying down a base of a natural pine here. It's a translucent toner. Now, there's heavier bodies and lighter bodies. And there you can see where I'm at. And it does not look like it's the right color at all. And that's sometimes the harder part about this is understanding color. Color is never going to be just one color on furniture if you're trying to match one to the other. Color is usually built in multiple layers to get to where you want. Now I'm spraying this now with a clear coat of sealer because I want to lock this pine in before I put the color, the next color on top of it. And this is going to do a couple things. One, if I need to back the color on top of it off, it's much e easier to do if I have a clear coat in between. The other thing is the clear coat will give me a good idea of what the color looks like. So sometimes the clear will change the color. It may make it, make it have more body. It may push it more to a yellow or an amber. And as you can see, as I clear it right there, all of a sudden you're really seeing the yellow push through because the clear is combining in with the rest of the sprayed on toner. And you're really getting a good view of what it looks like. And that's a scary looking result right there. But the reason why I'm confident is this is what I did to start. Here's natural pine and I sprayed it on just this piece of paper. And I did a few trial and errors with different colors. And then this is winter set pine. Now if I just went with winter set pine on my piece, that would be the right hand side of that. And that is pretty close to where I need to, but it, it's kind of blotchy. I don't like it. When I put it over the pine, you can see it has a much more organic look to it and then what I did was actually spray my paper when it dried with some clear sealer to get a good feel and below the line you could see is winter set pine only above it is the natural pine with the winter set on top that looks much closer to me than to where I want to go now it's not perfect but it is in the right direction now here I come with my winter set pine and I'm going to figure that I'm going to put about half of the amount I need to to start. I'm not going to push this all the way to the final color right away for a couple reasons. One is as the toner dries, it will darken and sometimes it darkens dramatically. So it's very easy for you to think that, oh, this is the perfect color and then it dries and it's three or four shades too dark. At that point, you have to back that off and then go again. So what I try to do is reduce my amount of work. I try to go about halfway to where I think I'm right and then put my clear coat, let it all dry, and then adjust again. So this is my winter set pine. And then here we could see I'm, I'm spraying my edge. And the key is that if it's not going the wrong direction, then it must be going the right direction. So if nothing's jumping out at me like it's too heavy with a certain color, then I'm pretty confident and I'm just going to keep working that color and reducing the amount of color that I put on each time until I creep up onto the color I need it to be. So my clear coat again is going to let me see the winter set pine as it blends in and shows through and it's also going to protect the layers. It's also going to let the light move differently through the different layers of toner and, and that does give it a more organic field. Now colors are funny the way they combine. If you just mix all these colors together you probably end up with a very bad color. But if you put colors on top of each other 
you can end up with a very natural, beautiful, organic looking color because it's not going to be all the way across. Now, in the darker areas, I'm looking at it and I'm very encouraged. That looks like my piece. So what I'm going to do is, is come again. Now, you're going to see how quickly the colors grow because I'm not putting on any more. This is just the second time through with this color. And you can see I'm pretty far away and I'm fogging it on lightly. If you go too close with these rattle cans, you will end up with spray lines. My advice is really go slow, keep your distance, and then let them fog on. The other thing is I like using the plastic handles because they tend to give you a good pressure on the spray cap. They tend to keep the can from spitting. And sometimes when the can spits, you get little dots of color all over your piece. So this is where we're at. And because we fogged it on, it looks very flat. The reason why it looks very flat is a lot of that toner is drying in the air. So it's landing dry rather than wet. So we're going to again come back with our clear coat. And the clear coat is going to drastically change the way it looks because it's going to eliminate that flatness and you're going to let you're going to get a better look at the way the color is and this is where we're looking at now we're not there but we're also not going in the wrong direction and we could tell by the edge is very close to the body that encourages me that just means i need to darken the top now what i'm going to darken the top with is the next thing i have to decide what i'm missing so what i feel like i need to add is a little bit of red in this but i won't don't want to add it every place this is very uniform and it looks just too uniform to me so i'm going to break it up a little i'm lightly sanding my top and i'm not sanding it for adhesion i'm sanding it because i'm going to lay these boards or i call them sticks on the top and i'm going to spray my toner on but it's only going to go in certain areas that are going to mimic boards now this is a cherry so this is a good, powerful red toner, and I took my paper and I played with this on top of my other stuff, and I felt like this would give me a good result. So I'm just very lightly fogging it on from a very far away, and I'm only shooting it towards one side of my opening there, so I create some imbalance even within the openings. And you see how little bit I put on there, not too much at all. Each color has a certain amount of... Uh, strength and you have to figure out so that's why you want to kind of spray it and test it before you just go ahead and start spraying it on pieces or it goes red is very easy to get too much on very quickly and this isn't like a sophisticated process here i just got some flat sticks and i'm moving them around and i'm eyeballing this and that's all there is to it i'm a big fan of keeping things simple simple succeeds a lot of times so I know I want to create boards. I don't need some crazy system. I don't want to put tape on my freshly sprayed piece because there's always a chance that the tape will stick. And I don't want everything perfect because the boards aren't perfect that it was made with. So I have to make it look very legitimate. So just those that little bit of red, and that doesn't look like a lot of red that I'm in there, but you can see right there, it really went red because the cherry is such a strong color and it really does make it pop on there. And again, I'm coming back with my clear coat right across the piece, and that's really going to make it all turn into one uniform thing. It's going to absorb in, and there's where we're at right now. Now, this is very, very close. I'm going to come back with just a little bit more of maybe the winter set pine, but this puppy is about done. This is Dan, the Furniture Repairman. Thank you so much for watching. You have questions, comments, go ahead, put them below. You want to see me watch, make a particular video, uh, put it down there. I'll see what I can do to get it done. You all have a good day now.